Hi there. In this video I'll be removing and refitting the pump on an Ariston A1324 UK washing machine. These pumps were used by a number of other manufacturers including Hotpoint, Creda and Indesit. So this video would also relate to them. Before you start work on any domestic appliance disconnect it from the power supply and where possible remove the plug from the wall socket. If your machine stopped while it still had a lot of water in it You'll need to lower the outlet hose as close to the ground as possible and into a washing up bowl or bucket to empty it first. This will tell you if the pump is faulty or you have a blockage. With the blockage no water will come out, but if the pump is faulty the water will flow into the bowl quite freely, depending on how much water there is left in the drum of course. The pump on any washing machine retains water when the wash is finished, so even if you have just emptied the drum there may still be some left in the pump housing. On this machine the pump is located behind the kick plate which will come off easily. If you ease the top section out first then remove the bottom clips. These pumps are easy to work on because they have a coin trap at the front. So tilt the machine backwards and slide the washing up bowl under it before unscrewing the filter. You don't have to unscrew the filter before removing the pump but I find it easier to empty any excess water that may be left in it by doing it this way rather than leaving it attached and having a gush of water come out when the hoses are removed. With the end of a screwdriver, try turning the impeller blade. It won't spin but should turn in a jerky fashion. This will tell you if the motor is jammed or not. If it doesn't turn and there's nothing visible stopping it, then you'll have to remove the pump anyway to investigate. One of the commonest things to stop the motor from turning is an elastic band. It wraps itself around the shaft at the rear of the impeller and the pump motor will need to be removed to free it. On the front of the housing are two lugs, or at least there should be, but on some pumps such as this one the top lug has been snapped off where it's been previously removed. With the screws out turn the pump clockwise and it will unhook from the cabinet. Before removing any hoses take a moment to look at how they fit and in what direction they're facing so you can refit them correctly when reassembling. Unplug the wiring connector if you've not previously done so, then remove the hoses. It's not a bad idea to keep the bowl under the pump while you take the hoses off, just in case any water does come out. These pump assemblies are far more expensive than just the motor, and because the housing is very rarely at fault, it would be far more cost efficient just to replace the motor rather than the whole unit. So if the motor is faulty then once again don't just start removing screws but take a look at where the motor section is in conjunction to the housing so the new one will fit back in the right position. If you do have an elastic band caught behind the impeller don't try pulling the impeller off because they don't come off. But use a pin or a clip and gradually work the band out a bit at a time. It may take a while but it could also save you buying a new pump. Refit the new motor in the same position as the old one and tighten the screws, but be careful not to over tighten because these housings are only plastic and you could easily strip the thread. The hoses should also be refitted in their original positions, or they may end up twisted when the pump's screwed onto the cabinet. Remember to reconnect the wiring plug to the motor before attaching the pump to the cabinet because it's easier to do while the pump's out. Where possible I'm using the type of tools available to the DIY enthusiast rather than specialist tools designed for the job. An engineer would probably use hose clip pliers to remove and refit these clips but as you can see it can be done quite easily with a pair of ordinary pliers. As I said earlier, this pump only has the lower fitting tag, where it should have one at the top as well, but it's the screws that hold it in place and it won't stop working because the tags are missing. Don't forget to refit the filter. I know it probably sounds silly, but it's easy to leave out and the first time you know it's missing is when you have water all over the floor. 
It's also a good idea to double check that all the hoses are on properly before you water test the machine. Hook the bottom of the kick panel in first, then press the top in and it will lock in place. On behalf of Selfix UK, we'd like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.